Hey, what's going on guys? Marvin here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be answering your guys' questions. You guys always seem to like these kinds of videos, these Q and A's that we just kind of do once a month or every other week. Uh, and you guys are very responsive to it. And I love that because I like answering the questions and solving some of the issues that you guys are having. So if you guys don't know how this works, I do these Q and A's every other week or once a month, depending on how many questions I get. And if it's a question that needs a more in-depth answer uh, farther than just a yes or a no, um, then I will make a video like this, or if it's a good enough question, then I'll make an entire video dedicated to that question. So if you guys have any of those questions, just leave them down below in the comment section and I will answer every single one of those um, briefly, and then I'll answer them more in depth in these Q&A videos. All right, so let's get started. So the first question is from Marab Khan. What are the attributes of a good product which we should keep in mind during product research? Um, this is a great question because, um, you know, you, people get onto the Amazon FBA platform and they start looking for products, but it's almost like information overload. There's so much information. There's so many products to choose from that you don't know exactly which ones you should be looking at or what you should be looking at, which one makes, what makes this one better than this one uh, besides just maybe sales rank or just besides maybe price. So it's a lot to take in. Um, and that's why I actually have a list in my, um, my course a checklist before you purchase a product or when you're evaluating and doing product research this entire checklist of what to look for but just some key things to look at is obviously price right can you get it at a competitive price is the price make sense to you is it going to be you know a profit margin that you are happy with and does it have any wiggle room so if the price happens to go down a little bit are you still okay with that or is the current price absolute bare minimum you can't go below that current price but the keeper graph shows that it does tend to go even a little bit lower that's definitely something that you need to look into also competitors how many actual competitors are on that listing that are going to be around the same price that you're selling at. There could be a hundred competitors, but if there's only five competitors that are selling, let's say for $20 and everybody else is waiting until it gets to $30, those are the competitors that you need to look at, the ones that you're actually going to be competing with. Keeping in mind that any of those other sellers could at some point drop their price and match. But generally we're looking at the competitors that we're actually going to be competing with in price. So price, competitors, and also obviously sales velocity. How fast is this product moving? It doesn't need to sell thousands and thousands of units a month, but if you're looking for a fast selling product, then does it meet that criteria that you're looking for? Or if you're looking for a slower moving product that has maybe more margin, does it meet that criteria as well? But those are three main factors to keep in mind and get you started price, competition, and sales velocity before deciding whether you should invest in a product or not. All right, next question is from Will Waldrop. I only have one review and it's two stars. How negatively will this impact my selling? I'm hoping to get more reviews in ASAP, but right now the one two star review is killing me. Yeah, that's not great. Um, depending on what the review is, if the review, let's say, is a product review and they left it on your actual seller account, you can get that product review or that negative feedback removed if it meets the guidelines within Amazon, okay? If Amazon needs to take responsibility for something with that feedback, or let's say, again, it's a, it's a product review and not necessarily a, a seller review, like they're not necessarily reviewing you as a seller, then you can get some of those removed. So I would definitely look into that because having only one review and it being two stars is not ideal. And let's say you do end up having to leave it on there. It's going to be very difficult to increase that because you're going to need way more positive reviews to undo that negative review. Okay. So start with that. Look to see if you guys can get that removed and that will definitely, definitely help you. And then, you know, focus on getting those positive reviews from here on out. Um, next question is from Philip Briggs. What is the best way to make money from investing? Very, very easy question to answer. Invest in yourself, invest into your own business. If you want to start a business or maybe you want to start a side hustle, make some profits, reinvest those profits back into your business and grow from there. All right. So next question is from JB. If you're already on gated, can Amazon take it back and gate you again? So the only time that this has happened to me is actually with the grocery category. So I ungated myself in grocery. And then what Amazon did was they ungated the entire category to everybody. So nobody had to apply to ungate in the grocery category. Then a few months went by and they regated the grocery category. So even though I ungated myself initially, I had to ungate myself again because they flip flopped with that category. So in that scenario, yes. 
Now, as far as them regating you for no reason, I've never heard of that happen. Uh, none of my students have ever messaged me and said that that has happened to them. Um, so I would say the chances of that are very, very low. All right, so the next question is, how do you join your first listing? Um, it's actually, there's a few different steps that you have to do, but you have to go onto the listing, you have to get the ASIN, then you have to take the ASIN, copy it, and then plug it into your added product in your Seller Central account. Um, which is a lot to explain here, but I made a video about it So if you want to check out the video, I'll put the thumbnail right here and I'll link it down below if you want to learn how to um, Add your first product to your inventory. There's quite a different a few different steps So that video takes you step by step but showing you exactly what you need to do. So there's no confusion there All right, the next question is from Matthew Taylor um, should I stay away from products that sell for significantly less on other marketplaces? For example, I found a fast moving product with a decent profit on Amazon, but the same exact product on eBay sells for half of what I can buy from my supplier. I'm guessing that the eBay ones may be counterfeit. Uh, the Keepa graph looks pretty steady and I got auto engaged for the brand. The brand is also one of the few FBA sellers for the listing. I'm currently waiting for approval from the brand via the supplier. All right, so it's actually a pretty good question. If you guys do any sort of multi-channel fulfillment and you know fulfill orders coming in from other marketplaces, then you guys will probably run into this um, quite often. So my answer to that is focus on how it's selling on Amazon. Look at the Keepa data, which you already have because you're saying it looks pretty steady. If the Keepa data is solid and it's been solid for, let's say three, three months, six months, a year, focus on that data. Don't worry about what it's selling for on eBay, especially eBay, because a lot of times the prices are much, much lower. And if you look at the very uh, finite details within the packaging or anything like that, like take for example, um, PlayStation 4 controllers, um, you can see that they're counterfeit, okay? It's very clear that you can see that they're counterfeit. But it can be from a bunch of different factors. Not saying that they're all counter counterfeit or or they're lower quality, it's just people will pay a premium to buy it from Amazon, okay? And if you have the data, the data is your best friend and the data is going to keep you on the right track before making that purchase decision. So just focus on what's on Amazon and if you can look at another marketplace and it's actually selling for more or it's just as profitable, then do a multi-channel listing so that you guys can fulfill those orders as well. All right, next question is from Grace. Uh, recently I had a problem in FBA sales. I found out one of my FBA sellers constantly cuts his price down to win the buy box. I wanted to ask for your advice. So this is an issue that we all deal with, whether you're doing wholesale, whether you're doing retail arbitrage. I know when I first started doing retail arbitrage, because your account's so new and you're all sourcing from the same place, you have some insane price wars with other new sellers and you being new yourself because you're just you know having a war down to to the bottom not saying that you're new i'm just saying that's what happens a lot uh, but we all go through this at one point or another now your options are very simple you can wait them out see how much inventory they have or just wait to see if that price comes up sometimes those people will sell themselves out right away and then they never come back sometimes they raise the price themselves and match all of the other sellers what you don't want to do is get into a price worth people and just drag that price all the way to the bottom where it's not even profitable and it's almost like an ego thing you're just trying to get those buy box wins don't do that give it a couple days give it a week or so and see what happens then they could come back up and match you they could sell themselves out and now you're selling at a higher price point now i'm not saying don't try to be competitive so if they go lower you, you can keep matching them with your repricer just make sure you set your mins and maxes um, to the appropriate amount of profit that you want to be making all right so last question is from kayla as a beginner in FBA, how many products do you recommend selling at one time? Now, there's no right or wrong answer to this. Um, it's just completely preference. Some people want to go a little bit more deep into one single product when they have a small amount of capital, uh, which just means going essentially much, much larger order or deep in, you know, in regards to how much money you have. So somebody going deep into a product could be a thousand, could be 10,000, could be a hundred thousand. But if you only have 500 going deep into that product is your whole 500 okay or some people like to diversify a little more and reduce a little bit more of their risk and they go wide which means you're investing into a a lot more products and smaller quantities now my personal recommendation is to just find a supplier and anything that's profitable invest in if you have let's say a thousand dollars and you have to reduce what you're investing in and you can sell out of that inventory in one month Get the most profitable product obviously product that's selling a little bit faster and it's going to be very profitable as far as you're just starting out that's what i would recommend get those faster moving products with decent margins to get the ball rolling get those that seller feedback coming in get your feet wet on orders because if you're brand new 
you're probably not gonna have the patience to buy a slower moving product that doesn't sell very fast and you're just gonna wanna get rid of it because you're brand new. So if you're just starting out, focus on a little bit more on those faster selling products that are gonna give you some feedback and um, you're gonna be able to see that money turn over at a faster rate. Once you get a little bit more comfortable with the process of Amazon and have a little bit more confidence in yourself and in the Amazon business, uh, then you can start investing into those smaller um, moving products or the slower moving products with higher margins uh, because you have that discipline to just be patient because you know they're gonna sell over time but um, but there's no specific amount of products that you that you should limit yourself to if you have the funds and you have the inventory available to you from your supplier invest in whatever is gonna make you the most amount of money all right guys but that's it for this Q&A if you guys enjoyed it make sure to like the video it really helps the channel grow subscribe don't forget to turn your post notifications on and make sure to leave your questions down below in the comment section so that I can answer them in the upcoming Q&A depending on how many questions I get I can either do one of these a month or two of these a month so just leave your questions down below it doesn't matter what question it is and I will answer every single one of them I'll see you guys in that next video Thank you.